Hi, John. How long has this been in the works and how exciting is it to see come to fruition with today's announcement? Oh, hi, Nathan. Um, you know, it's funny you ask that. I look back at my my first emails with Barry Marshall, who is uh, uh, Sir Paul McCartney's iconic uh, longtime manager, and um, they date back to early 2020. So we've been at it for a little while. Next, Rich Dubroff. Hey, uh, John, a couple of years ago when you had Billy, jo when you had Billy Joel uh, and, then, and, then the pan and then the pandemic hit, how important uh, are concerts and other, uh, you know, other kind of events to, uh, to the future of what you see uh, in, at the Oriole Park? So I think, Rich, they're, they're in, in, so many, in so many ways, they're, they're vitally important and, and, and as strange as this may sound, maybe nothing else in terms of live events could be more important because this is something you can control or try to influence, I guess. Control is too strong of a word. I wish that were true. Um, I think it's important because you can go out beyond the baseball schedule if, 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 if the ball club wants to be active and proactive and entrepreneurial, which, which the Orioles do and our management team is focused on um, and essentially say we're open for business and say Camden Yards is a world renowned venue, which, which it is. And Baltimore is a destination for first class live entertainment, which, which we think it is. Um, if, you, if you wanna do that and you wanna put the time and resources behind it, which, which we do, um, you can bring in events and the nice thing is we're all aligned, whether you're the Orioles, the city, the state, um, and our various stakeholders and partners, everybody locally wins. And, and you know, hopefully um, Paul McCartney wins because it's a great show and, 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 and he enjoys playing the venue as much as, as, much as Billy Joel did. So um, uh, it's, it's incredibly important. It brings in extra revenue. It's a way that a middle market, small market team can also compete um, in a, in a system, as you know, that is, that is, um, you know, where all payrolls are not the same. Coleman. John, uh, as far as Sir Paul, um, why him? Not a bad choice, obviously. And I have, is it a guy that you have seen in person in the past? And did you realize the historical aspect of it that he hasn't played here since I think a lot of us before we were even alive. So I guess, I, I guess, uh, like you said, he's, he's a, he's a great choice. And, uh, you know, another iconic, uh, artist who has influenced all of our lives and been a part of history and is, um, followed by millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, whatever it is worldwide. And so, you know, we definitely set out to pursue and sell, if you will, um, some of the best artists in the world, like Billy Joel and Paul McCartney on Baltimore and Camden Yards. So um, you can't do much better than Paul McCartney if you can do better at all. I don't know where you would go for that. And um, no, I've never seen Paul McCartney. I've never, never seen, but I did not know the historic significance until somebody said to me, said, said something about the Civic Center. And I thought, to your point, the Civic Center, um, I don't, they barely were still calling it that when we were kids. So um, that must have been a long time ago, but I didn't realize how long ago it really was. Nathan Ruiz. John, you mentioned going outside of the schedule for events like these. Just in regards to the schedule, do you expect the season to start on time and, and to play a full 81 game home schedule? Um, well, I think you guys know, I, look, I, I hope the season starts on time. I, I hope there's a full schedule. Um, that's what the fans want. That's what the players want. That's what the teams want. Um, but you know, the collective bargaining process is just that it's a process. I, the Orioles, I'm, and I am not on the, um, labor committee. Um, we're not involved directly in the negotiations. So, um, I, I really like to leave that to the commissioner's office and the owners that are on the labor relations committee and our friends at the players association. And I, I'm hoping for the best, just like, just like all, all of, all of you are. And, um, but I, I can't make any predictions. I, I certainly, I think it would be good for Baltimore and good for baseball fandom to, um, to play. 
Ken Connolly. John, a, a lot of people, a lot of fans are paying attention to the lease negotiations, how that gets done with the, the stadium. When you have an event like this and it is successful, how much does that help you guys in those negotiations, in kind of getting what you want to expand and make the the uh, the venue more of an overall, you know, place for people to come besides just baseball? Yeah, that's so that's a that's a good great question, Dan. Because I I I, I think it. I think when when the team and the state and the city can work together and, you know, make we do have to work together. It, it although the Orioles are carrying a load on on pursuing something like a Paul McCartney or a Billy Joel and the other things that that we have, you know, up on the the, the wish list, um, it it would only work ultimately if if we as a community can fulfill and execute. So to do that, you need. Tom Kelso, the chairman of the MSA on board. You need the mayor of Baltimore, Brandon Scott on board. And so we all have to um, sort of win with it. And I have every confidence that we will. So does it make, to your question, does it make the Orioles do better in, in, in the partnership? I, I, I'm sure it does. It's better to have 83, 84, 85 events than 81. It's better to bring another 40, 50,000 or more people to downtown Baltimore. Baltimore is a great city and we need it. We need more people coming back downtown. So uh, sure, I think it does help the Orioles position in terms of saying um, we want to be part of the solution. We want to be a drawing card. We want to continue to do what we've done over 30 years. But I, but the only place I would say it a little differently um, and not a lot differently than what you said is, you know, I, I do look at it and I think Tom, uh, Kelso and and Brandon Scott look at it that this is a truly a, a public private partnership. So I, I'd like to think in our next um, phase of the partnership, we're not so much thinking about it in terms of a lease. Certainly, there will be negotiations. You're 100 percent right, but I, I think the next phase of this is 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 a public private partnership, much like what the Orioles have done over the last 10 12 years in Sarasota, where where we really are partnered with the state, the county, and the city. And we drive, in that case, 100 million, nearly $100 million in economic impact a year. So, but, but if you went down and asked any of the stakeholders there, they would say it's a public-private partnership with a memorandum of understanding. And they really wouldn't use the word lease, but, but you're right. I mean, certainly there's always that time where you negotiate. I, I just hope we're looking at it like we're all winning together. Rich Dubroff? Hey. Uh, <clears throat> Hey, John, uh, speaking, of, uh, speaking of that lease, do you expect it to be concluded uh, during the, uh, before Governor Hogan leaves office next January? Well, I, I, I don't know that, I can't predict that either. Um, I, I would say that the Orioles and the Maryland Stadium Authority um, um, have never at any point in time from the first minute I, you know, got together and sat down with Tom Kelso, neither one of us has ever said anything other than um, we can't wait to extend and renew uh, this public-private partnership. It's been a great, great success. Nobody ever thought back when Mayor, uh, first Mayor, and then Governor Schaefer and others were the pioneers of this and other things like Harbor Place um, that it would the Camden Yards that Oriole Park alone would draw 75 million people in 30 years. That no, if you look back at the projections in the legislature, from what I understand, that they, if they, if, if Camden Yards had drawn a fraction of that, people would have been over the moon. So um, Tom and I have always said, we can't wait. So, so if we can do that during uh, Governor Hogan's um, term, I think that would be wonderful for everybody. And certainly I think it would be appropriate because the governor has been a big supporter and is a is a, somebody that has a great vision for partnerships and for, for public-private partnerships. And I think you can see that in, when you listen to his appointee as the chairman, uh, Tom Kelso, talk about public-private partnership. So I'm very optimistic, but, but you know, I can't predict that either. Great, Coleman. John, when you... Uh handed the uh, reins sort of to Mike Elias. You, you said that he was going to take over. It's been a while since we've been able to hear from you. Um, can you provide any thoughts on the way things have gone in terms of where 
the state of the ball club is with its rebuild and, and moving forward? Um, I think, you know, I go, Jerry, by what I, what I hear others say, as well as by what uh, Mike and his team are, are doing. And um, by, I think most accounts, um, the work that Mike and Sig and Brandon and the, the, the team there has done to um, build not only the present, but the future in the international market, um, modernizing scouting and player development, investing in technology, um, all of those things that have moved us um, by all accounts up the ranks of the scouting development uh, rankings um, are all good indicators and nobody has guarantees, nobody has a crystal ball. Certainly Mike and Sig and Brandon and, and the team are, are very um, are aspiring to get all the great results and put us back where we were a few years ago in terms of being competitive. Um, but um, so I think all, all the news is good. Um, and in terms of the prospects for the future and the you know, only time will tell. I, you know, I will say, I don't, I don't think Mike and his team or anyone else kind of envision the, 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 the rapid advancement in the, the perception of the talent and the Orioles scouting and player development um, system. And, and some of that talent certainly comes from prior drafts that predate um, Mike, but, um, but other of that talent comes from Mike's time here. And um, I think the, uh, the, um, the ascension of the uh, perception of the system is nothing but a great thing. And um, I'm really proud of, uh, of what the team has accomplished. And I think it's really gonna be beneficial for Baltimore. I certainly hope it will be. If there are any remaining questions, please go ahead and put your name in the chat now. And next, Nathan Ruiz. John, you mentioned how many people have come to the ballpark over 30 years with, with hitting that benchmark. What's the significance of that to you? Uh, you know what? I think it, I think it's a lot like what today, I think it's just speaks really well of Baltimore and, and I'm bullish on Baltimore. I think Baltimore is a great city. I think we all do. And uh, I think when Paul McCartney chooses Baltimore, when Billy Joel chooses Baltimore, when 75 million people come to downtown Baltimore, um, that's gratifying if you grew up here. And uh, Jerry said it the other day, the history of you know, when the last time Paul McCartney played here, well, he's back. And um, that's pretty awesome. And um, you know, it makes me feel good about, about that. And the 75 million fans, um, look, much like I mentioned Sarasota, when we went to Sarasota 12 years ago, we said we, we would, we would generate 40, 45 million in economic impact every year. And we've doubled more than doubled that. So I think when you under promise and over deliver for your, for your home away from home in Sarasota, that's a good thing. I think when you do it for the place you grew up, that's a, the greatest thing. So um, I'm, I think we're all really proud of that 75 million. And, you know, you add in what the Ravens have drawn and the fact that this Camden Yards complex is approaching hundred million. I mean, that's just a, that's just an awesome thing. And I think if you're young, if you're not as old as some of us are on this call, you don't know what a, what a revolutionary idea it was in the sixties and seventies and even eighties, they were building these sports venues on, on beltways and out in the suburbs and empty fields and people were leaving cities. And this was a big chance that people took to, to reinvest in a downtown and to do an iconic ballpark and all the things. And it worked and it worked big time. And that's why, you know, we have a, we have a desire and an aspiration and an obligation, I think, to make it work for the next 30 years. And that's on us and, and, and the Ravens and the MSA and, and everybody. Why shouldn't we draw another 70, 80, 90 million in the next 30 years? So part of doing that is to extend yourself. I mean, we could sit back and do 81 games, but why, why should we do that? We, we, should, we should go get these artists and, you know, let's go get Pearl Jam and the Foo Fighters and, and let's get them all. And let's get them all to come to Baltimore. Um, and um, you can't think of a better venue, better located, better managed, better run, better built. So why shouldn't every iconic artist play at Camden Yards? They should. So I'm, I'm super proud of that. And, and it means a lot. I think it means a lot to everybody that's grown up here. And Connolly? John, you've mentioned both the, uh, the rebuilding effort and where you think it is at this point and, and you're happy with where it is. 
And you've also um, mentioned about attendance coming through. Um, how confident are you that when this team, the product on the field is better, that you'll get that attendance back? Because obviously, whether it's the pandemic, whether it's the product on the field, the attendance isn't where you or anyone in Baltimore would like it to be at this moment. Um, how confident are you that the Orioles fans will come back to Camden Yards in droves once there's a, uh, you know, a, a on-field product that is, you know, competitive or better? Yeah. So, you know, good question. I, you know, I'll say this, um, Dan, you know, from 2012 to 2016, when I think about the attendance, which really wasn't that long ago, right. And, and, and just a couple of years, you know, less than a handful of years before the pandemic sort of change the world for all of us. Um, I, I think what, what the Orioles were drawing to downtown Baltimore at the end of that five-year period of, of um, you know, good play um, was, a, was a decent attendance, but I think we could have done better um, even in that sort of fifth year of competitiveness. Um, and I think we would have done better um, had we you know, maybe explored best practices. I mean, you can always market better, sell better, prepare better make the customer experience better. And so I look at that high point of 2012 to 2016 as not the highest point we could have reached then. And I think that's a good marker um, because that means if we do everything right or many, many, if not most things right for the next five year period of, I apologize for the dogs, um, of competitiveness, um, we can um, do even better than that. So um, obviously a lot of wild cards Dan, because, you know, post pandemic, who knows, um, certainly sports leagues to just to take the other side of the discussion, sports leagues are always looking for what's the future going to be. Is the fan base going to continue to renew itself? Are, are people going to buy season tickets subscriptions the way they historically have? Um, there's a lot more competition with new sports leagues. And that's true in music, too. I mean, music took the biggest hit from the pandemic. Um, you probably won't see a lot of people out there starting new music festivals. It's a tough time to do that. But I think you've got to fight that fight and be optimistic. And I don't see why if we do things right and are good stores of the, of the ballpark and the experience and that Mike does a great job with his team of the, what goes on between the lines, um, why shouldn't we draw two and a half million or more, um, maybe significantly more? Um, that, that's certainly the aspiration, um, whether we get there, you know, but, you know, we'll, we'll see.